Stephen Crook claimed four wickets and captain Stephen Peters cracked a half century to put Northamptonshire in a strong position at the end of the first day of their LV County Championship opener against Glamorgan in Cardiff. Peters, the new Northant skipper, won the toss and asked the host to bat first, with Will Bragg edging an early boundary. His opening partner, Ben Wright, was less fortunate though. He hadn't got off the mark when he nicked a ball from David Willey behind at the start of over number three. Batting was certainly not easy early on, with Australian import Trent Copeland finding plenty to assist him. But in spite of such things, Bragg and Stuart Walters batted well in the first hour, weathering the threat of the new ball as they added 51 in 20 overs for the second wicket. It was an encouraging start for the home side and it gave few clues as to what would happen later in the day. At this stage of proceedings, at any rate, Glamorgan were going along rather nicely and a decent first innings total looked on the cards. That was until both batsmen fell in the space of five deliveries. Bragg on 22 clipped a ball from Crook straight into the hands of Carl Kurtzer at square leg. Before Walters on 23 was LBW in the next over, bowled by Andrew Hall. Crook in his first game back in Northamptonshire Colours after a spell at Middlesex then claimed the big wicket of Marcus North who edged to Hall in the slips. Three wickets had fallen for just two runs in 16 balls and that left the Welshman in some trouble on 60 for four but new acquisition Murray Goodwin and Jim Allenby then began a fight back which went into the afternoon session. Much is expected of the vastly experienced Goodwin, but he'd made only eight on debut when he nicked Willie behind. Allenby then followed Goodwin back to the hutch in the very next over, Copeland bowling straight, trapping the Australian in front for 16 to leave Glamorgan on 87 for six. Mark Wallace and Graham Wagg then went on the attack, blasting a number of boundaries in a briefly entertaining stand, which brought 30 runs in only five overs. It was a good counter-attack for the two experienced players, who will doubtless have been in similar positions to this over the years. Had they kept going for a little while longer, then their side may have had a much better opening day to the 2013 campaign. As it was, Wallace offered no stroke and was bowled by Crook for 18 to leave the hosts on 117 for 7. And Crook, having a great day, should soon have had a fourth wicket but David Murphy inexplicably spilled the edge offered by Dean Koska. Thankfully for Murphy, that wasn't an expensive drop, as Koska was finally bowled by Hall for an 18-ball duck. Wag followed two balls later, as Crook did claim his fourth victim. Wag on a top score of 26, edging to Copeland. The last three wickets fell without a run being added. Debutant Michael Hogan, an Australian import, drove Hall to mid-on as Glamorgan were all out for just 134, Crook taking 4 for 30 and Hall 3 for 18. Peters, who took over the captaincy reins from Hall in the winter, would have been thrilled with his first day in charge and he looked set to ensure that Glamorgan were not going to be let back in as he soon went after the bowling. However, he did lose Kurtzer at the other end after his decision to shoulder arms to Hogan backfired. Glamorgan were well aware of how clusters of wickets could fall and so they would have felt fairly confident themselves of dragging their side back into this contest. Peters, now joined by David Sales, had other ideas however and these two put back to ball in adding 41 runs for the second wicket in 10 overs. The Welshmen did have their chance to restore parity, however, when first Sales edged a drive off Michael Reed to Koska. Before, to the very next ball, Alex Wakeley was the latest to go without playing a shot. LBW the decision to leave North Hants on 58 for three. Reed, who claimed a six foot in a university match last week, then thought he'd found the edge of Rob Newton's bat only for the decision to go against him. Newton also got away with another big shout, this time for leg before. Such decisions very much worked in the visitors' favour. But after that difficult start, Newton began to settle in, while Peters continued to play freely and very smartly as he went past his half-century off only 61 balls, these being two of three boundaries he struck in succession off Allenby. He struck 10 in his 50 as his side scored at more than four and a half runs per over before bad light brought the day to a premature end. 
By the time stumps were drawn, Peters had 60 runners to his name and with Newton on 21, Northamptonshire have closed to within 26 runs of their opponents, with seven wickets still in the shed. They will want more of the same on day two.